Hold on, Carlo, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them when giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. This week, we are all about sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are referred to as Rabuon, Mapuoni, Makwasi, Washe by different communities come in a range of skin and flesh colors. We have white, yellow, purple, and more recently, orange-fleshed sweet potatoes, which are becoming more and more popular in Kenya. We are in Makueni with Elizabeth, who isn't growing any orange-fleshed sweet potatoes at present. But I want to know if she'll be interested in growing them in the future, adding a new revenue to her business. What kind of uh, sweet potatoes are you growing in your shamba? They are um, summer oil. Mm -hmm. and purple. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, orange fleshed sweet potatoes? Yes, I've had it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever seen them? I've seen them at the, the market. Did and you I buy them? And I bought them and they, they are so sweet. You cook them yeah, for the family? Yeah, yes, yes. Did the family like them? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. And after you've enjoyed them, what did you decide to do? When I can see them, I can plant some more. You want more yeah. orange flesh sweet We're potatoes? You're in luck yeah. because we've got Moses, our thank, expert. Thank you, thank you. And he's waiting for you. Yes, let's yes, go meet I want to meet him. Okay, let's yes. go meet him. <laughs> Moses Wamalwa is an agronomist from International Potato Center, SIP. He's here to see if Elizabeth Shamba can grow orange flesh sweet potatoes successfully. Our expert, Moses. Yeah. Okay. Now, just tell us briefly, why should she plant orange flesh sweet potatoes? Oh. Orange flesh sweet potato is one of the most nutritious crops that we have. Yes. Actually, compared to yellow fleshed and white fleshed, orange flesh sweet potato has vitamin A, which is very important for our bodies. Yes. The other aspect about uh, orange flesh sweet potato is because it is very high yielding than the other varieties. Thirdly, you'll find that uh, the orange fleshed sweet potato matures in a very short period of time mm. to take you four months yes. against the traditional varieties that will take six to eight months. Mm. Therefore, you are able to produce your sweet potato close to three times in a year. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were telling me earlier that you got your last seeds or vines. Where did you get them from? I get from, them from my neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, is that advisable? Really, it is not advisable. Uh, you are supposed to actually get seed from certified plant material multipliers. Uh, there, you are sure the farmers have been trained to produce seed that is satisfied and will give you the yields that you require. But when you get material from your neighbor, most of the time that the material is deceased or infested, when you grow, you use the material, eventually your production and the yields come low. So if you want your yields to be very high, then you really have to look for where you have to source your planting material. Mm -hmm. Now in this area of Makueni, where can Elizabeth get the vines? We have several vine multipliers across the country. And in, in Makueni, in an area in as water, where she can get planting material. Getting your orange flesh sweet potato vines from a registered vine multiplier will ensure that one, your vines are pest and disease free. Two, you'll have a healthier crop. Three, you will get high yields. These are the areas where you can find certified vine multipliers in Kenya. Nice, how mm -hmm. can I plant them? Come, yes. I show you around. Let's yeah. see, let's see, so let's see good. how to plant them. Yeah. Moses, where do we start from now? So the first thing you do is to clear the land. Okay, let's clear it. So you slash, you use a slasher. Huh? Once you have cleared, mm -hmm. you'll get a jembe, yes. a hole, and then you have to dig deep. It's important you dig very deep, at least 30 centimeters inside. Eh? Mm. Yeah, because sweet potato likes deep soils. Mm. 
After you've dug up the soil like this, yes. you leave it to, for two weeks mm -hmm. and then uh, you come back. So how deep, you should it, how deep should it go? It will mm. go at least 30 centimeters deep. Yes, one okay. Deep. That is the depth. Yes. It's so nice. So, now that's done. Uh, so this is how it will look like yes, all of it. Yes, this is how it looks like. Like that. Yeah. So once the land is clear, mm -hmm. you need to make what we call ridges. Ridges. The size of the ridge is one meter wide and uh, the height of the ridge is at least 30 centimeters. So you make a measurement of one meter. Uh -huh. Elizabeth, we yes. can make a stick mm. that is one meter like this. Yes. And that's what you use for me measurement. To make the ridge, and we we'll take measurement from the string. Yes. From this point, then this point, and then we we'll put a peg like this, and then we'll do the same at the other mm -hmm. end. And we then place we'll make it. another meter here. Hmm. And place your stick and there. We we'll put a peg there. Yes. So that is the dimension of our first ridge. This is just to show you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and then you can move it a little bit. And then where you put the pegs again on the other side, mm -hmm. you do the same. So why do farmers, why do you have to keep it in a ridge like this? The reasoning is because uh, what you want to do is to give enough depth for the sweet potato tubers or roots that will come. Uh -huh. Get space mm -hmm. to enlarge freely. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you have a uniform crop, uh -huh. a more regular shape of the roots, yes. which is good for the market, for processing, as well as for fresh markets. What we are trying to achieve here is enough depth. Moses, yes. are these prevents? Yes, this uh. is what we call planting material for sweet potato. Uh. They have come from a certified vine multiplier within Makweni County. Uh. The other aspect is you have to look at the age mm. of the planting material. Very old planting material are not good enough. They don't pick very fast. But young material that is between two to three months is the best. So the material I'm holding here is between two to three months after pl planting. Mm. That thing is we look at the length of the planting material. That is the cutting. What we want is a cutting that is about one foot long. Mm -hmm. If you look at this, it's about one foot long. Yes. This is the ideal planting material size that you require. Mm. If you have longer material like this one, mm. then you'll find that it is quite costly to buy this. And at the same time, the lower parts of the cutting normally is not safe to actually plant. So we measure our height from the tip of the cutting going backwards. So you will have something like this is the best material. Oh, it's so good. This is the right, sir, mm. the right size. Okay, right. so how do we plant it? Yes, mm. when you are going to do planting, you must ensure that the soils are wet, right? When you are planting, what you need to make sure is you are putting a certain amount of the cutting into the soil and a certain amount of it outside the soil. That mm. is to make sure it picks up properly. So what we do, you using your hand mm. at the tip of the ridge, you will place your cutting like that. Plant your OFSP vines along the ridges at a spacing of one foot or 30 centimeters from plant to plant. Place two thirds or two nodes of the vines into the soil and farm the soil. When you are putting in, into the soil, what you need to make sure is you don't put it straight. Straight. You put it slanting. slanting. Oh, yes. And the reason why you do that is because you just want to make sure that all the nodes that are on the cutting are able to give you the sweet potato. Elizabeth, do this yes, one. Let me do it. Yes, and we farm it up. <laughs> So, farmers, if you grow quality orange flesh sweet potatoes, you can sell them at fresh root markets or sell them to a processor for a better price. Make sure to keep some at home for the family too, as orange flesh sweet potatoes are good for your family's health. From Makweni, we cross straight to Nyanza, where we meet Michael.
Here they call sweet potatoes rabuon. And we get another expert, Tobias Muga from International Potato Center. It is harvesting time for Michael's orange sweet potatoes. Even though he got a good crop of potatoes last season, he got a low price on the market. Bad handling of sweet potatoes after harvesting can lead to huge losses of up to 50% in some cases. So, Tobias is here to show Michael the best way to handle harvested sweet potatoes so he can get the best price on the markets. Wow, wow, wow. This looks interesting. I wonder what is going on here. But before we find out, I wanted to know how badly Michael lost out in the last season. Yes, now yeah. Michael, how bad was it? It was uh, about 35% to 40 35 percent to 40. To 40. That's serious, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, what should farmers look out for? Yes, one before a, a farmer uh, harvests these crops, he or she must be very sure that uh, the farm has taken uh, the exact number of uh, months. Yes. That is like uh, five months, so that uh, the roots they would be getting are the right ones. Aha! Uh -huh. Because yes. because what happens if the farmer harvests when it's too early? you will end up getting very small roots mm. which will not fetch much like in the market. One. Like... Uh, Give us an example. Ah. Yes, like uh, when a farmer harvests when they are, too, uh, they are a little bit too early, mm -hmm. then they will get those kind of roots, very small. So these will fetch nothing at the market? This will fetch nothing at the market. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this. Yeah. So now, what about if a farmer waited for too long to harvest. Yeah. Maybe he's thinking if I if I harvest later, I might be able to get a good price. What happens? Too late, they will also get the roots which are too big mm -hmm. and may not fetch good price. Can we see one? Because like uh, this one here, this is a too late. It's wow. too big, but inside is also spongy. But it looks beautiful to me. Yeah, it looks beautiful, but inside is spongy. Yeah. Wow. So. Timing is very important. Timing, Timing is, is very, very important. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's important the sweet potatoes are not too big and not too small. So, harvesting should be done at five months. Now, what about after harvesting? This is a curing. After harvesting, you leave them here for about two hours yes. so that uh, the skin gets hardened. Ah. so that the peeling off does not occur so much. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you need to cover them at any particular time? Well, when they, they are under the shade, you don't need brew. But when they are not under the shade... When they are open. When they are open, uh, we would use uh, the, the vines, the cuttings, to, to, cover, to, to them. cover them. So that uh, they don't get sunburned. Because mm -hmm. the moment they get sunburned, they become black, the, the roots. Ah. Yes. Uh, after consolidating them here, uh, a farmer would sort them into groups. Yes. One, the grade one, that is a great one. That is a great one. Which means it's the good one. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then the other one will be the, the, the ones that have been damaged. Let's have a look at it. So these ones are kept aside. Also. These ones are kept aside. Those ones have been damaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one also happens when uh, people don't use ox plow, when people use hoe or jembes. Uh -huh. Yes. Were you getting this also? Yes, when we were using the nini, jembe. The jembes. Yeah. What are we you using now? I'm, I'm using a plow. A plow? Yeah. And you can see the difference. Like, very, very big difference. Very because big of difference. difference. Wow. Now, for a farmer, this one fetches very little. And uh, sometimes uh, a trader comes and leaves you with this. We cannot take. So now, yes, from take. here, yes. what does a farmer do? After sorting, now we will now go to the washing. What is it doing? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. What are you doing? What are you? Stop, stop, stop. Thank you. This is the old system that we've been using to clean our sweet potatoes. Really? Yes, and uh, it is uh, an old tradition. We no longer encourage this. Why, why shouldn't farmers step on them? They will uh, get br bruised. They will be breaking them. And then it is not also hygienic. So which is the best way of doing it? So the best way of doing them is to use a hand, not just stepping on them. Mm -hmm. Yes, the best way is this one here. Uh, ah. where you find the old mama cleaning them gently, rinsing and putting the, the cleaned one there. So, so do you recommend farmers to wash all of them? They can wash depending on the market outlet as the market demands. Mm -hmm. What is the danger of washing them and they're not going for market? Washing reduces the shelf life. If they are washed, they it takes about one week. If you cannot get a market or if you have them in the market, they will go but they will start rotting. Uh -huh. Yes. So which is the proper way of storing your sweet potatoes? The proper way that we carry through the cooperative is use of crates, mm -hmm. like this one here. Why crates? 
crates is because of the aeration, uh, the spoilage is also reduced, and then they, they don't break. We just put them in a crate like this, slowly. Ah, slowly. Mm -hmm. They don't get bruised. Aeration is also very high there. Like that? Yeah, like that. And now you can take them to the market. We now can take them to the market. Yes. This is good. Michael, yeah, through, can you compare this with what you are doing earlier before? The, what we were doing before was mm. so bad because we, we were stepping on the food, peeling off the skins. Mm. It cannot stay for, uh, for two for a weeks. Long time. Yeah. So and you're also putting them in sacks. In sacks. So oh, there's like no air circulation. All right. Yeah. This is good. If you grow quality orange flesh sweet potatoes, you can sell them at a fresh roots market or to a processor for a better price. There's still more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back to Shama Shepherd. <laughs> Great! We have learned how to plant and harvest orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. Now, let's learn how we can use it in our everyday food. So clean. Hello. Hello. We meet Antonio, who works closely with International Potato Center, SIP, to help develop innovative orange-fleshed sweet potato products. And Amina, who together with our family, run a roadside cafe and use a lot of the OFSP products. So it's time to wash our hands and we put on our protective clothing. We certainly don't want to be spreading any germs inside. Orange flesh sweet potato puree is a profitable and nutritious commercial product. But the secret is you can also make this from the comfort of your kitchen. Antonio, what is the first step? It's very important for the roots uh, when you get them is to wash them. Make sure everything is cleaned up. So it's important to peel. The reason for peeling is because of the method we're using, we're gonna use a grater. So some of the skin, it can be a little bit rough. So you want to make sure just, you have removed everything and all that. Now we're gonna cut to be able to get the right size. Most of them you just cut by half. If, if it's bigger uh, than this, you can cut three times. The next step is now we need to be able to steam. Why, why are we steaming? I thought... Kakaro, last time you made some orange flesh sweet potatoes. You took a lot home. How did you prepare them? Don't remind me, Toddy. Mm -hmm. I just took the orange fleshed sweet potatoes and I peeled them just as you've done. And I put them in a sofuria and added water up to the top and covered and boiled. Uh, and you ate them? Uh, kind of. And you served them to the family? Yes. Were they happy with them? No. Why? They, were, they kept sticking. They kept sticking in our tongue and mouth and teeth and... How was the taste? All I can remember is sticky. Sticky? Yes. I steamed mine and they were delicious. Everybody loved them. That is the perfect way to be able to do it. Uh -huh. So it's the best way to do it is to steam. Why, why, why is steaming more important than boiling, especially when it comes to orange fresh sweet potato because it's already contained water and because of already the starch content is very sensitive inside so when it gets to boil you start another chemical reaction which make it jellyish and stickiness and that's what you want to stop and that's why the recommendation and i would tell people is steam or roast the main benefit of steaming is one it will, you have a higher retention of the nutrients and you avoid the stickiness. I know people have a sulfuria. You can get something like this. If you don't have something like this, there are people use like uh, uh, a cup. You can put two, three cups on top. Find something, uh, a ring. If you don't, you can get a mesh. The important is when you're putting your roots to avoid to touch water. The level of the water should go below this so that the root is on top. And but that way you already create a steamer. But, but this applies mostly to orange flesh sweet potatoes. I recommend if you're using anything like tuber and roots, mm -hmm. because anything that is touchy, you want to steam than to boil. Make sure you save some for me, I'll have to eat that. Okay, <laughs> let's steam. Now what we need is to get our water. Once we place, we put our ring, and you can see the water is still below the ring. And now we put this one, this one helps to be able to block so that the steam goes up and it's also evenly distributed. Okay, once you've done that, we want to make sure that you have an airtight uh, lid so that the steam doesn't escape. We need to get uh, the cooking stove. 
you want to make sure you have something heavy here so that the steam remain inside. Once cooked, the sweet potatoes are allowed to cool down before we can start the puree process. Oh, that looks so good. Let's have a taste. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Very nice. So, Caro, the first time you heard the word puree, puree. what did you think it was? Uh, soup. I, I thought of France, uh, pu pudding. I don't know. <laughs> so, so, puree basically is what? Anything you mash is a puree. Ah. There's different ways of making puree. And if you pound it, sometimes our hand is not uniform. So we end up with lumps. So one of the best ways to go is to use a grater, but you use the finer part with the holes coming out. Mm -hmm. When you grate it, it makes puree automatically, but it's uniform. Mm -hmm. So you don't have lumps, especially for kids. If you're going to use it for porridge, for whatever you're using, you avoid the lumps. Because any recipe you do, you want to avoid lumps. Looking so good. when you look at it, it yeah. looks like spaghetti. This is because there's no water. Uh -huh. And if you actually you touch it, it's not as sticky or jelly or gummy uh -huh. because it falls off. So now are we ready for chapati, Mandazi? Oh, yes. Now that our puree is ready, we can now learn how to use it with our daily foods. Okay. So right. Antonio, what are we making? We're going to make Mandazi and also we'll be making chapati mm -hmm. and also bajia. Tony loves bajia. Yes. How did you people know? I could also try to make some um, chapati. I can make some <laughs> very good chapatis, but later on. Mm -hmm. Shakila, no. does puree make our chapatis last for longer days? Or uh, maybe if I make it with puree, it will go bad? Yeah, puree, it can last. When you make a product, it mm -hmm. can last more than the day to expire, as in three days more mm -hmm. or two days more. Wow. It depends on what you make. Mm -hmm. So if I make maybe on Friday, I know I can have it over the weekend till yes, Monday. Yes. That, that saves time, Tony. Add a cup of orange-fleshed sweet potato puree to your ingredients when mixing your dough. Remember to add water last, as the orange-fleshed sweet potato puree already contains water. This will make your chapatis, mahamris, and even bajias tasty and nutritious. And Tony, chapatis should be round, not squared. <laughs> Good. I have tried. Caro, it's mm. better. And this one. You have to go to class. <laughs> Welcome to the Shambashi Pup Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect very little to no rainfall across Kenya, North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makueni and Kajado, will continue to see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. However, lower and eastern parts of Garissa will be an exception in the region, getting up to 15 mm of total rains. The coastal counties will get moderate rain, ranging up to 25 mm in the week. This includes Lamu, Tana River, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. However, Taita Taveta and upper parts of Tana River will see low total rains of less than 5 mm. Central Kenya counties will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. This includes Laikipia, Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Moranga, Kirinyaga, Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu. Most of the North, Central and South Rift Valley counties will have moderate rains of up to 50 mm across the week. This spans across Baringo, Wasingishu, Nandi, Kericho, Bomet to Nakuru. Trukana, West Pokot, Samburu and Narok will see very low total rains of less than 5 mm. The Western and Nyanza regions will get low to moderate levels of rains ranging between 15 to 50 mm in the week. This cuts across counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga to Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri. For more tips and detailed weather forecast for your area, get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. Let's meet here next week for the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Hey there. Do you want more information on the topics being discussed on Shamba Shape Up? We are bringing you the Shamba Shape Up podcast where you can get farming information and tips anywhere, anytime. Join us as we discuss good farming practices and dig deeper. Now, 
Where do you get this podcast? Easy. WhatsApp the word podcast to iShamba on 0748-153-120 to get a link to the podcast. You can also Google us, Shamba Shepop Podcast. Tunde Kazi. I wonder what car was found out in the bakery department. Well, Tony, do you remember when we learned how to access quality orange-fleshed sweet potato vines and how to best plant them for high yields? Well, now I'm here at the supermarket bakery, ready to find out what customers think of the orange-fleshed sweet potato bread, which is made from the orange-fleshed sweet potato puree. This way, our farmers can see what potential added value market there is out there and whether growing orange-fleshed sweet potatoes is going to be a good business for them. Yeah. Jockey and Lindsay, yeah? I didn't know I was going to find you here. We are here. Ah, you yeah. look busy. We are very busy. How is business? Business is good. Business is good. Yeah. I can see people just eating, eating. Yeah, here Where's my piece? piece? Okay. Good. Are you selling? Yeah, we are selling. Mm -hmm. yeah. People like it? Yeah, they really like it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What else is there? Okay, Food let's go. Fancy bread, of course. Yeah, here we have bread. Mm -hmm. Here we have the buns mm -hmm. made of sweet potato. Sweet yeah. potatoes. Yeah, the orange sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's actually very sweet. Mm. And very soft. You don't have to struggle. So, the bread is good. Yeah. Why would you recommend that someone should buy this kind of bread? Orange flesh sweet potato bread. Okay, the benefits, one of them is good in uh, vision good vision. You can see somebody from the far distance. Mm -hmm. It boosts your immune system. Wow. When you take it, you will remain healthy. You will not be attacked with, with any diseases. You mean like flu? Yeah. So it boosts your immune system? Yeah, it boosts All your right. immune system. Mm -hmm. The third one is also, it has fiber. Yeah, the fiber helps in digestion. That yeah. is nice. Yeah. Wow. How do our customers get this kind of bread? Okay, we supply them in the shops. Mm -hmm. We supply the puree in the shops, mm -hmm. then they make it. In every, any shop you can get it. All right. No, you don't have to struggle. Is it affordable? It's very affordable. The price is not that much expensive. Oh, that is the price? Yeah. That's affordable. Yeah. There's no big difference. There's no big difference at the small mm -hmm. brand. It's only that now you very have healthy. added advantages. Yeah. That is nice. So you said customers buy it? Yeah, they buy it. I really want to see that. You don't okay. see believing. Yeah. Can we see that? Okay. Can't see. All right, let's do that. Okay. Now, let's see what the customers think. We want you to taste this bread and tell us what you think. Mmm, it's made of potatoes. Yes, orange mm. flesh sweet potato. Very nice. Mmm. Mm. So sweet. Mm. I like it. I like it. It's not like bread, bread. It's like something better in it. Very well balanced. Mm -hmm. mm, it's good. Wow. Mm. Let me test once more. Do I taste some guasha in it? Yes. Orange flesh, sweet potato. One, it's good for good vision. Second, it adds fiber. So you're yeah. in. It's also in constipation. It really is nice. Yeah. All right. I really recommend. Okay. It's very nice. Ah. You're gonna can like to buy one. You you want to buy one? Yeah, you can buy for the family. Well, these customers certainly seem to like orange fleshed sweet potato bread. This orange fleshed sweet potato bread is so delicious. <laughs> there you have it. From the shamba to your food table, and for the farmer, from the shamba to the bank. See you next week on another exciting show of Shamba Shepa.